There's a poll this week apparently saying that 60% of people want the government to get on with Brexit. Well, according to a company called Delta Poll, 60% of voters polled agree with the statement, I no longer care how or when we leave the EU, I just want it all over and done with. Sort of dignitas, isn't it, really? Yeah. <laughs> When's the appointment? Yeah. What is this order? What do you want? Do you want it over with or do you want it fought out? Over with. Oh, 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 open the box. <laughs> Take the money. <laughs> Just glad to see divided Britain yeah. in action. <laughs> that was a second referendum. That was it. <laughs> I sort of think that most people will vote Remain if they do it again. No, all the polls suggest people haven't changed their minds at all. OK. <laughs> no. Everyone in here, if you had your time again, who would vote differently? Well, what's that going to tell us? No! <laughs> <laughs> do you know what that is 50% going... put their hands yeah. up. The world. That's, that's conclusive. No, what that tells us is absolutely pointless to have a second referendum because for anyone to vote any different, they would have to admit they got it wrong the first time round. Right? No one's people... going to do that. No, people don't want to do that. Yeah. All that talk about, oh, if there's a second referendum, there will be 80, 20 in favour of Remain, not on your Nelly. No, no. chance. <laughs> it will be exactly the same outcome. Because, mm. say you weren't happy with the level of immigration two years ago, you're not going to be happy about it now. No. So, if, if, if you saw two years ago the country was run by unelected European Union bureaucrats, well, nothing over the past two years would have changed your opinion on that. <laughs> well, and if you were daft enough to fall for the 350 million quid a week for the NHS law, you're daft enough to fall for something else next time round. <laughs> <laughs> This week, Boris Johnson predicted a post-Brexit baby boom. Just what we need, said a beleaguered doctor at Leeds General Infirmary. <laughs> <laughs> so, at the end of that round, it is two points each. <laughs> He's been charged with oh. lying, hasn't he? Yes. With, with falsifying, uh, with the big bus with the figure outside that was something like 300 £20 billion pounds a week goes to Europe or something like that. So we'll have to be careful, they'll cut this out, and I don't want anyone to spoil the fun of thinking Boris is, is going to go to jail for life. We... <laughs> uh... <laughs> so, at the moment, we're just at the preliminary hearing stage... Oh, right, okay. ..about whether, when he was a public official, he was um, telling lies and, therefore, abusing his office. It should be an interesting trial. I mean, very similar to putting the Pope on trial and saying, ''Are you a Catholic?'' Um... <laughs> He was sacked from the then sacked from the sacked by his own reprimanded Ian, yes. we're not allowed to say anything that might prejudice the case. Well, that's absolutely fair enough, because I would like him to have a fair trial with a desirable result of him being in prison forever. <laughs> without wishing to prejudice the outcome of the case. No, because we mustn't do that. I'm not saying he's guilty. <laughs> <laughs> Would you like to see Boris Johnson? Let's deal with your arguments. One of them is on the side of this bus. We sent 350 yes. million to Europe. We don't, and we you do. know we don't. No, we don't. We do. You know we, we do. don't. No, no. Admit we that that figure no. is grotesquely misleading no. at best. I won't, I won't, I won't. The true figure is 161 million, correct? Uh, no, the true figure is 350 million In pounds. net terms, the, true, the real figure is 161. If you take out the abatement and the, okay. and the money that comes back, the UK money that comes back via Brussels, okay. the figure is and obviously you... lower. <laughs> <laughs> Matt Lucas is so good. <laughs> so let's make the most of this, our final chance to talk about the EU. Oh, God, if only it was the final chance yeah. to um, talk about on the EU. On this programme it is. Let's see it off with a quick-fire buzzer round of E-University Challenge. <laughs> Fingers on buzzers. Why are there 12 stars on the EU flag? Is that how many times we've won the World Cup? You have to press oh. your button. Jason? <laughs> it's us. It's us. What? Oh, sorry. That's one of the things they test you when you go into university. Can you spot a light coming on? <laughs> I was looking over there. Oh, no, there it's, nice. Nice. it's nice in the winter months, though. <laughs> <laughs> you, you what was the question? Uh, because they were, there was originally uh, 12 member states. No. No. There is no reason. There just <laughs> are 12 <laughs> nice. arranged in a circle that apparently symbolises unity. Yeah. Or it may not. <laughs> uh, 
fingers back on buzzers. Where is the highest toilet in Europe? <laughs> Merton, Merton. Merton. <laughs> <laughs> or do I have to go like this? He wasn't a Merton. <laughs> <laughs> Merton, life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are Nuttall's plans? To hold the government to a hard Brexit. Mm. And yes, if Mrs. Sort of May muscles. at any point goes soft, mm. Nuttall will be there. Yeah. <laughs> That's yes. the motto. Don't go soft, yes. Nuttall's watching. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we definitely want a hard Brexit. It's got to be hard to be good. Everybody knows that. <laughs> 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 this is pornographic. Um, I... <laughs> really um, any offers of panto this year? <laughs> Of course, there are the shockingly high EU immigration figures that have just come out. Yeah, <laughs> record EU immigration figures today. They're all coming over! There's <laughs> <laughs> oh, the some in here, we Suzanne! Want, Take want, cover under the want. desk! Oh, my God! <laughs> Strange accents and everything! Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you see, this is the fundamental misunderstanding about I UKIP. Know. We're not anti-immigration at all. We just want... <laughs> <laughs> You see, that's the problem with the message. It, it hasn't really got across. <laughs> no, no. This is a debate between Corbyn and Johnson, live on TV, which was a historic first, as for once, Carrie Simmons knew exactly where Boris was for an hour in the evening. <laughs> also during the debate, Jeremy Corbyn told a story about a friend who'd turned up at a hospital which looked like Beirut, in that it was chaos. And Jeremy Corbyn was in the corner laying a wreath for a terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> The highlight of the debate for Johnson was Corbyn's evident discomfort over Brexit. In fact, Boris hasn't enjoyed seeing someone squirming so much on a podium since he first met Jennifer Arcuri. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of other politics stories this week, so let's play the politics randomizer. Hey. Hey. Yeah, fingers on buzzers, everyone. Yeah. Here's the first one. Well, you've just mentioned her, haven't you? I think she gave an interview somewhere where she said um, after the media uh, attention that she was getting a couple of weeks back, she appealed to Boris, uh, not for the first time, <laughs> <laughs> to help her with her media thing, but she, he, was, he, he cold-shouldered her. Addressing uh, Boris directly, she said, I've kept your secrets and I've been your friend. I'm terribly heartbroken by the way you have cast me aside like I am some gremlin. Gremlin. Which is exactly what someone would say if nothing happened, which is what she keeps saying. <laughs> nothing happened. Nothing happened. That's what you always say about a political or business relationship that's gone on to hard times. Yeah. You say you're heartbroken. Yes. You? And you yeah, feel yeah. you've been cast, cast aside. aside. Like a one-night stand is also what she said, isn't it? Yes, it's what the email I got when we moved from Ocado to Sainsbury yes. online, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Who did Jennifer Arcuri fail to impress this week? Lorraine Kelly. She'd refused to say the one thing she was on the show to say. Yeah. And Lorraine Kelly said, well, why did you even appear? Yeah. Which, you know, is not a good precedent for people appearing She's on like... breakfast telly. <laughs> <laughs> She yes, if you're not going to say something interesting <laughs> and insightful, what's the point of this programme? Oh, bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look at that. What, what's the point? Come down and not answering any questions. Point that. Anyway, so and... I know, <laughs> it just doesn't make, it doesn't make any sense. What's the point of you coming on and then not saying anything? I'm sorry? What is the point of you coming on the TV um, to clear the air and then you don't say anything? Why? Well, I, I believe I said a few things. What, what is it that well, you're looking for that I say? Well, that you, did, you didn't answer any, any of the questions that, the, that was, were put to you, and I just don't see the point of you coming on, to be honest. Anyway, let me tell you what's coming on after half past. <laughs> <laughs> Because the thing about her is she's very happy. She doesn't believe in Brexit. People thought, oh, maybe secretly she believed in Brexit, and so it's OK for her to lead a government. That's maybe she's doing changed Brexit. her mind. Or maybe she doesn't care what the government does. She just wants to be Prime Minister of it. Ah. Oh. So she'll do, you oh, know. Well, at least she's not like Jeremy in that sense, because he certainly doesn't want to be <laughs> Prime Minister. You know, they're, or they're maybe the, not. They're the perfect opponents, aren't they? The yeah. person that will be Prime Minister of any government. And the, she'll and the one who'll say, be Prime Minister of none. Yeah. She, if Labour wins, she could say, Jeremy, don't worry, I'll be Prime Minister. I'll just do the Labour stuff. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't, I didn't believe in Brexit. I did the Brexit stuff. I can do it all. I'm a session musician. <laughs> the Department of International Trade uh, has been trying to help to reduce the stress of the Brexit negotiations on their staff. 
How? Foot massage. Yoga. Mindfulness. That is included, but where would this mindfulness in take a spa. place? In a something room. Locked I would, I would padded like cell. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's called a tranquility room. Oh, yes. Okay. What can you do in a tranquility room? Listen to soft panpipe music. <laughs> <laughs> you can make a mindfulness jar. <laughs> you have to fill a jar with water and put <laughs> glitter in it. <laughs> Does Gwyneth Paltrow sell one? <laughs> uh, if you can get it up your vagina, she <laughs> can... <laughs> We're going to grow our own food, according to Chris Grayling. Back to a diet of turnips, carrots and cardboard. <laughs> Didn't do us any harm in the war, mm -hmm. so we're going to have it again. <laughs> he said that Britain will succeed, come what may, and responding to warnings that a no-deal Brexit could cause food prices to rocket, he said that we'll just... Grow more here. This idea that we're going to grow more food. People, I mean, people don't even make sandwiches anymore. <laughs> it just hasn't been out of the house. People are too tired and depressed to even put cheese between bread. <laughs> it's like people go, well, I'll just grow some quinoa and some carrots then. <laughs> people will just die. We'll just won't eat. <laughs> Do you know, I'm positively upbeat compared to you. <laughs> <laughs> I think his point is that, you know, we can do it. We can well, I... forget you know, currency, we can go back to barter system. We can exchange <laughs> mud. <laughs> I think Chris beans. Grayling. Grayling's going full Ray Mears to prove his point. He's going <laughs> to turn up to Parliament in a suit made of squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> this is the temporary shortage of pigs in blankets at Weatherspoons. It's a worrying sign, just one week into Boris Johnson's New Britain, and it's not just the homeless that don't even have blankets. <laughs> Cheer up. <laughs> Get Brexit done! <laughs> <laughs> All disputes with disappointed customers at Weatherspoons have now been resolved. There was just one major sticking point, the carpet. <laughs> <laughs> That's <You're>... very tacky. <laughs> In other news, a Michigan family has been passing down a 141-year-old homemade fruitcake as a family heirloom. <laughs> According to the Associated Press, Guinness World Records don't have an entry for the world's oldest fruitcake. So, Stanley Johnson, get on that phone. <laughs> Ian and Emma, take a look at this. Oh, right, yes. We're back to this. The tiny violin. Tiny violin. Ah, oh, yes, that's Zach. Going into the House of Losers. <laughs> I mean, sorry, the House of Lords. This is the fallout from the election. Yes, this is the aftermath of uh, Boris Johnson's resounding election win. Zach Goldsmith lost in Richmond, but I think Boris has proved that the first thing you do as a proper people's government is appoint an old Italian friend of yours into the House of Lords, Nikki Morgan, who was sitting over there last week, saying, I've left politics. No, she's a lady now. Uh, Baroness Morgan, so she's in the Cabinet. Well, she's culture secretary, who will be presiding over the BBC. Yes. Will she? Yes, she's she the sounds brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Nikki Morgan said she was leaving politics to spend more time with her young son, but on Monday she was back in government. Though, in my experience, one weekend with the kids will do this. <laughs> <laughs> she's no longer an MP, so to enable her to remain in the cabinet, she's been made a dame. Um, <laughs> appropriately enough, did you see Boris's panto performance in the Commons on Tuesday? Let's have a look. This Parliament is going to put the withdrawal agreement... Friday? In the... in the... <laughs> in the pop-dipping, as we say in, in Wales. Mr Speaker, I wonder if you can guess what this Parliament is going to do once we put the withdrawal agreement back. We're going to get Brexit done. I did want to play a drinking game on Newsnight every time a Tory MP said, get Brexit done, but I realised I'd be shit-faced before we finished. <laughs> would massively improve news night, wouldn't it? <laughs> it was nice to see Jacob Rees-Mogg sitting up straight, wasn't it? <laughs> just, yes. Just there. We haven't seen him the whole campaign. Certain people just disappeared during the campaign on both sides. Yes. Well, he underwent a medical and they examined his DNA and they realised he was a total tosspot. <laughs> <laughs> with, with, uh, with a hint of hazelnut. <laughs> Laura Koonsberg had a documentary about the Brexit election on this week. Have a look. My Thank son looks remarkably you. like you. I'd just like nice you to look. Oh, nice to see it looks you. Looks like you could be on look. Quite off my chest now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, moving on to Labour, Jeremy Corbyn yes. has, of course, 
um, accepted total responsibility for Labour's defeat, except for all the things that were nothing to do with him. Um, and he's compelling all Labour MPs to vote against Boris's Brexit deal this week, just so all those ex-Labour voters <laughs> don't forget. He said that he won the argument. Yes, that he did. That was his description of what happened in the election. He said in The Guardian that despite losing, he had won the argument. The argument being, who is Britain's least electable man? <laughs> <laughs>